版的主持和翻译拉拓。那么在这一次的直播中呢，我们再一次邀请到了李志言大师 Jenny 来为我们讲解葡萄酒的大千世界。嗯，在上一次的直播中呢，李志言大师向我们介绍了美国的纳帕谷这个产区。那么在今天的直播中。君丽将会向我们介绍另外一个举世瞩目的葡萄酒产区，相信大家都听说过这个地方，那就是法国的勃艮第产区。那么现在话不多说，我们就将时间交给君丽。Well, I'm very excited to be talking about Burgundy because I know it's a region that many people find very confusing, and I think today we really want to take some of the mystery out of Burgundy and try to have people become more familiar with a lot of the place names and regions and styles. So I hope that within this hour at live stream that we can share some great bottles of wine and also maybe you know. Get a little familiarity with the names and the regions, so that next time you come across Burgundy, you feel much more comfortable. 嗯，那么李志言大师听说要讲解勃艮这个地这个地方，他也是非常的激动，因为呃，其实许多的葡萄酒爱好者对这个地方都十分的困惑，因为这里实在是有非常多的产区、不同的风土、不同的地名。呃，相信在这一次的直播之之后呢，呃，各位呃酒友也会对勃艮第有一个更好的了解，而且在今天的直播之中，我们也会嗯、呃、跟大家一起分享。许许多多的美酒，帮助大家来对勃艮第这个产区变得更加熟悉。So let's get started right away to talk about first what is the essence and 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 the background of Burgundy that makes it so fascinating. And I think there are three very very key reasons why Burgundy is still so fascinating after so many hundreds of years. First of all, if you've ever visited Burgundy, you notice that it is rich in history. The、uh, Romans were there planting vines, and after that, you had a lot of dukes and churches. The monks spent hundreds of years cultivating this land, trying to produce the best grapes that made them closer to God. So that's one key reason why Burgundy still remains so fascinating today. 那么今天呢，首先君里会讲，呃，讲到的就是说勃艮第这个地方它的精髓所在。呃，我们回追溯历史的话，就会发现，呃，从古呃罗马人开始，一直到后来的勃艮第的公爵们，还有教会的修道修修道僧们，他们都对勃艮第这个地方投入了很多的心血。嗯、呃。世世代代的人呢，都一直想要弄清勃艮第这个地方到底哪一种风土是最好的。And the second reason is because Burgundy really cultivates two major grape varieties. That's Pinot Noir for for red wines and Chardonnay for whites. And what they've done in this region is look at these two grape varieties planted in so many different types of soils and cultivated by individual farmers, small farmers in general, because the average size of Burgundy is around eight, eight hectares per by producer. So these small farming、um, entities then try to create an expression of that particular grape. Whether it's Pinot Noir or Chardonnay, into what they think is a reflection of the land, of the place, and not just、um, a, a grape variety or a sense of their own style. The best producers will always tell you that what they're trying to do, what they aim for, is to express the place where these grapes are grown. 那么使得勃艮第如此特别的另外一个原因呢，就是它主要采用了两种酿酒葡萄，一个是嗯、呃、黑皮诺是用于酿制红葡萄酒，然后另外白葡萄酒的话就是主要采用霞多丽来来酿造。而在这里呢，种植葡萄的呢都是一些非常小型的生产商，嗯、呃，他们的平均每一个生产商他们所拥有的土地大约只有八公顷，嗯、呃。在品尝他们所酿造的美酒的时候呢，我们总是能够感受到这些生产商他们究竟想要表达出，呃，他们的葡萄酒想要展现出什什么样的特色。And so you have history, you have this purity of expression using these two major grape varieties because they're not blended. It's always a pure Pinot Noir or a pure Chardonnay, and you may have. Also, Gamay or for reds and Aligote, but by and large, the quality wines from Burgundy are really from Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. So, 
You have those two factors, and the third one that adds the additional modern fascination for Burgundy is the fact that you have depth. You have depth of understanding of the soil, of how a wine and a particular variety can express itself in so many different ways. And you're able to go deep because every vintage, the same winemaker produces a very different type of wine because they work with the weather and what the grape, the wine is trying to produce or convey to you is that not only is it from a specific place, but because it's from a certain vintage with whatever amount of sunlight, warmth, and rain that it had in that vintage, it is expressing itself through the wine to you, this expression of terroir and place and time and climate. 呃，那么刚才呢，君丽已经提到了两个使得勃艮第特别的原因，一个呢就是呃它的悠久的历史，然后第二点呢就是它采用了黑皮诺和霞多丽这两种葡萄品种。呃，除此之外呢，勃艮第其实也会采用佳美来酿造红葡萄酒，或者说阿里高特来酿造白葡萄酒。但是呢，其实呃真正在最优质的葡萄酒之中呢，通常还是使用呃这个黑皮诺和霞多丽这两种葡萄来。酿造的，嗯，那么呃，除了葡萄品种之外呢，还有第三个原因使得勃艮第的葡萄酒具有如此的魅力，呃，就是因为呃，在不同的年份之中，呃，同即使是相同的生产者，他们酿造出来的葡萄酒的风格也会非常的不同，嗯、呃。因为每一个年份，它的阳光还有呃温度的条件都是十分的不同，而成酒的风格也就因此不同。So you have this amazing complexity and so much diverse choices of both wines just from one grape variety. You have three thousand seven hundred producers in Burgundy, and you have so many expressions and by vintage, by style, by region. So today, I think it would be very helpful to go into. Some of the key regions to look at the names of villages you might see on the label and say, well, when I see this on the label, what what does it mean to me? What should I be expecting from this wine? 嗯，那么勃艮第这个产区的葡萄酒呢，可见是非常的多变的。即使只是采用同一种葡萄品种，但是却能酿造出许许多多风格的葡萄酒。在勃艮第这个地方呢，一共是大约有三千七百家生产商。而，嗯，今天呢，我们就是要呃来看一看勃艮第这些呃最最知名的一些产区，然后呃来了解一下这些产区分别有什么样的特色。But let's put Burgundy in a little bit of a context before we go deep into the villages. First, if we compare Burgundy with, let's say, Bordeaux, a region that many people are familiar with, then you see that the size of Burgundy is actually quite small because the total volume that they produce in a year is about 1.5 million hectoliters. And if you compare that with Bordeaux, they're at 4.8 million hectoliters. And that means that Bordeaux produces more than three times the volume. And yet, you have about 3,700 producers in Burgundy compared to almost 8,000 in Bordeaux. And you, you're looking at quite a complex region because everyone is so small and so individual and, and so um, unique in the way that they are producing their wines. 呃，如果我们将勃艮第这个产区与著名的波尔多产区来比较的话呢，呃，我们就会发现勃艮第这个地方面积其实是非常小的，而这里的年均的葡萄酒产量仅有一百五十一百五十万公顷左呃一百五十万公升左右，但是在波尔多这个地方呢，却有呃四四百七十万公升左右的年均产量，而呃谈论到生产商的话呢，刚才我们提到勃艮第。大约是有三千七百家生产商，而在波尔多就有将近八千家生产商。呃，所以说勃艮第这个地方真的是呃非常的精致，非常的小，并且复杂。呃，但也正是它的独特之处。So the best way to look at and understand the structure of Burgundy is to look at what I call the quality pyramid for Burgundy. And if you look at this very closely, you'll see that. A lot of the, the most common wines in Burgundy really fall at the generic and commune level. And that means we're talking about wines like Bourgogne or 
communes and villages like Merceau or Poligny Montrachet or Gevry Chambatin, Chambon Musigny. These are what you find in the everyday wine shop or the burgundies that you become familiar with because these are the villages, these are the communes and they produce the vast majority. Okay. Um, so if you look at the top, you have 33 Grand Cru's, right? But you have 640 Premier Cru's, and these names are on the label, and they mean something to every producer that makes these Premier Cru's. So that means there are 640 variations or differences in one of the top wines in Burgundy. So just to memorize, 640 plus 33, that's about 700 names of places. And these vineyards are exactly that. When you visit Burgundy, you'll find that in the village of Von Romane, you'll see that there are premier crews like Le Brule and others like Le Chaume. And then you'll find that there are also top grand crew vineyards that that are defined and and have their own particular place on the slope and this is when you realize that if I am really going to uncover and understand Burgundy do I really have to memorize 700 names? Jinzi so when you look um, at all these confusion of names, let's go straight to the general map of Burgundy. And when you see uh, the general map, you can see that um, Burgundy is divided into very key distinctive parts. You have Chablis in the north, which is considered part of the heart of Burgundy. Uh, and we're talking about Côte d'Or. Côte d'Or is the golden slopes of Burgundy. And this is where you get almost all your famous grown crews of both red and whites. So Ch Chablis and Côte d'Or is, is one block, let's say. And to the south of it, you'll have Côte Chalonnais. Then you have Maconnais. And below that, you have this very big region called Beaujolais. And most people, and many people, don't know that Beaujolais is actually part of Burgundy. But in many figures that you see, you see that uh, Beaujolais is not included because it's such a big region. It takes up about half of the quantity and uh, the hectares if you were to count Beaujolais in with Burgundy. 嗯,那麼呃在學習勃艮第這個產區呢,我們現在就來看一下勃艮第它一個整體的一個地圖,呃我們可以看到在地圖上呢,勃艮第被分為了幾個比較主要的子產區,呃在北部的話呢,就是這
Cote Chalonnaise is also a region we're not going to talk about, although they produce some really wonderful whites and reds, uh, especially if you are a fan of Aligote, a grape variety. There are some amazing examples from Cote Chalonnaise. So we are, we are going to talk about um, all of those regions, and we will go straight into Cote d'Or and Chablis. 那么今天呢，金米将会讲到的产区主要是集中在这个夏布利产区和金秋这两个这两个产区之中。呃，因为呢，像在夏龙内丘、呃马贡呢、呃以及博若来这个三三个产区，主要是生产一些人们日常饮
。呃，那么呃，日夫雷香贝丹这个村庄呢，它的面积大约是大于四百公顷。呃，这里呢有一些一级园，同样也有特级园。呃，这一个村庄它的葡萄酒的风格呢，呃，最大的一个特点就是它有着非常明显的深色梅果的风味，比如说像是呃非常成熟的野生的草莓。呃，而且它的单宁呢也非常的顺滑。呃，虽然说不是像是呃。不是像是沃恩罗曼尼这种呃非常优雅的风格，但是它的它的丹宁也能够支撑起这这这些非常顶级的葡萄酒。So next you have c h a m b o u l m u s i n i which is a region I think that most Burgundy lovers、uh, always pay tribute to because they make some of the most amazing m u s i n i Grand Cru, b o n m a r and also、um, you know just basic village wines that are elegant, light, and very perfumed.、Uh, and the character in c h a m b o u l m u s i n i is all about flowers, about femininity, about silky light tannins. 嗯，那么香波接下来要讲到的呢，就是香波穆西尼这个村庄。呃，这里呢同样有一些特级园，比如说是穆西尼特级园，呃，以及波内马尔特级园。呃，而这里的葡萄酒呢，风格就呃。又有他自己的特点，比如说，呃，这里的葡萄酒它的风格非常的优雅，呃，非常的芬芳，呃，最大的特点就是具有明显的这个花朵的香气，它总体来讲是一个非常女性化的风格的葡萄酒。And then you have Vougeot, which is really well known for its Grand Cru Clos de Vougeot. Majority of this appellation is really devoted to Grand Cru. A little bit to Premier Cru and very little to the village, and it's a place that many people go to for、uh, affordable Grand Cru. But there are around seventy, eighty producers making Vougeot Grand Cru, and you find that the the quality variation can be very wide. Some producers who are great can make amazing Vougeot, and others、uh, are more disappointing and is only maybe at a Premier Cru level rather than a Grand Cru. 呃，那接下来要讲到的呢，就是福旧这一个村庄。呃，在这里呢，特级园是它的最大的特色。呃，呃，这里的呢，种植者主要都是投入在这个特级园之中，而对一级园的投入就会少一些。呃，至于村庄级的葡萄酒呢，投入就是更加的少了。呃，福旧这个呃村庄的特级园葡萄酒的价格其实是比较能让呃消费者们接受的。呃，但是这里的呃生产商。呃，光是在福旧特级园这一、这一、这一个园子之中呢，就有大约七十到八十家生产商，而他们的生产出来的葡萄酒的品质也是呃变化差别比较大的。有一些呢品质非常的优异，但有一些呢品质可能呃水平与其他的一些一级园是相当的。So now we come to really the pearl of Burgundy, and the region that everybody pays homage to, which is Von Romanée. And why? Because all the top Grand Crus of Burgundy for red wines are housed in this village. It's not a village as big as Gevrechambertin, but you have all the famous names there, like Romanée Conti, Latache. La Grande Rue, La Romaine, so Romaine Saint Vivant, and these these are the wines that every Burgundy lover aspires to taste at least once in their life. 嗯、呃，那么接下来我们要讲的就是这个被称为勃艮第的珍宝的这样一个村庄呢，它叫做沃恩罗曼尼。呃，在这个呃这个村庄呢，我们能够听说到许多呃非常知名的特级园，嗯、呃，比如说罗曼尼康帝特级园、拉塔西园啊、呃，以及圣维旺特级园等等。Another final region that I want to mention for in Cote de Nuit is really、um, Nuit Saint Georges. This is a very large village that makes a lot of village and premier cru wines. There are no grand crus in Nuit Saint Georges, but very reliable, always firm, sturdy,、uh, with very firm tannins and、um, dark fruits. And it's a style that makes it very easy to have with lots of red meats. So it's popular, and there are many great producers in the region. So it's popular among consumers,、uh, especially and restaurateurs and sommeliers. 
呃，那么在叶秋这一个产区之中之中呢，就你会提到的最后一个村庄就是这个叶圣乔治。呃，叶圣乔治这个村庄呢，虽然它没有特级园，但是它是会生产非常多的一级园、村庄级，呃，以及村庄级的葡萄酒。呃，这里的葡萄酒的风格，呃，是非常的呃强强劲有力，单宁非常的坚实，而且也具有深色梅果的风味，用来搭配呃红肉。呃，这一类食物是非常不错的，所以呢，这一类呃，这个叶圣乔治的葡萄酒在这个餐厅之中是非常受欢迎的。So let's go now to Cote de Bon, because this is a region that is famous for their top Chardonnay, and this is where you find your Montrachet, your Batac Montrachet, Chevalet Montrachet, and all the Grand Cru names. Of uh, great Chardonnay that is collected by world collectors, you know, the world over, for its long, very minerally, very intense wines that have a very unique personality. 嗯，那么接下来要讲到的就是金秋南部的这个。嗯，伯恩丘这个产区，呃，在这里呢，呃，非呃，在这里非常有名的就是这个白葡萄酒，采用霞多丽酿造的白葡萄酒。呃，我们可以看到一些呃有名的特级园的名字，比如说像是。嗯，蒙哈谢特级园、骑士蒙哈谢特级园等等啊，这里的白呃霞多丽白葡萄酒呢，它呃具有这种矿物质的特质。So we have to start out in the city of Bonn, which is a beautiful city that most people who visit Burgundy stay in, and and they're able to walk around this historic、um, city that's filled with restaurants, beautiful churches, cobble street stones, wonderful places just to have a glass of wine. But around this this city, you've got both red and white wines that are elegant, light, and affordable, good good value. Um, very good examples of what Burgundy, great Pinot, and a Chardonnay can bring without a very high price tag. 呃，那么我们首先呢，呃，讲到伯恩丘的话，我们从这个伯恩这个地方开始。呃，在伯恩这个地方呢，它其实是许多呃来游览勃艮第的游客都会停留的地方。呃，因为这里有非常多的餐厅，呃，以及非常呃古典的建筑等等。然后呃，人们呢，呃，非常适合在这里坐下来静静的喝一杯红酒。而这里的葡萄酒的风格呢，也是呃非常优雅。轻盈，而且它的价格是性价比非常的好。So their Bon Cote de Bon not only makes great whites, but they also make very good reds. So if we talk about two villages that really represent very good,、uh, you know, red Burgundy from Cote de Bon, is besides Bon reds, you have Volnay and Pomal. Two very different styles, but they are from the Bon side rather than the Nuit side.、Uh, and Volnay being perfumed and light and elegant, and Pomard being a bit more stern and and with very chewy tannins, but both with its unique identity in Cote de Bon. 嗯，那么呃，除了白葡萄酒以外呢，伯恩也会生产出呃非常优质的红葡萄酒。在这里，我们就要提到两个村庄的名字，一个叫做沃尔奈，一个叫做波马。呃，沃尔奈村和波马村，呃，不。波马村的葡萄酒呢，他们的风格又是十分的不同。呃，沃尔奈村它的特点主要是非常的芬芳，非常的轻盈；而在波马这个产区呢，它的那个酒的风格就要更为的强劲，单位也更为耐嚼。So I've saved the two best villages for Great White Burgundy for last, and that's Merceau and Pouligny Montrachet. Merceau people know as a very full-bodied. Rich, round, buttery, kind of luscious style, and that's the traditional way of making Merceau. But now the top Merceau producers are making minerally very focused, very precise, very detailed wines. So Merceau has shifted a little bit in style, but the more famous neighbor is Pouligny Montrachet because it has so many Grand Cru vineyards, and Pouligny Montrachet is a little bit more elegant. More floral, balanced, with an incredible amount of finesse. 
嗯，那么在讲到伯恩丘的最后呢，君尼呃要提到的呢，就是这个莫尔索和普里尼蒙哈谢这两个呃非常有名的白葡萄酒的呃产酒村。呃，在这个蒙莫尔索这个产区呢，它的葡萄酒的风格主要是非常的饱满，然后具有黄油呃的这样的一种风味。但呃刚才所说的呢，主要是呃比较传统的一种呃莫尔索白葡萄。酒的风格，而在现在呢，它会更倾向于嗯、呃、更加精致，并且具有一些矿物质的风味。呃，那么它的嗯、呃、与这个莫尔索相邻的一个呃村庄呢，就是这个普里尼蒙哈谢村庄，它的白葡萄酒也是呃非常有名的，因为这里有许多有名的嗯、呃、有名的嗯、呃、特级园。这里的酒的风格呢，呃，则相对的更加的优雅、轻盈，呃，更加的精致。So now, um, since we come to about halfway through the program, and I've done a lot of talking about、uh, trying to introduce Burgundy lovers to some of the villages and styles, why don't we take a few questions? Um, from 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 our listeners. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. 那么，君尼呢？呃，我们的直播已经呃接近过半了。然后现在的话呢，呃，我们可以来、哎、回答一些来自观众朋友们的一些提问。呃，那我现在呢就会看一下，呃，为君尼挑选一些问题。I'm just going to pour these two wines so we can taste it next. Uh, well, okay. Jenny, yes.、Um, here are some questions from the audiences, okay. and um, uh, maybe uh, the first one.、Mm -hmm. um, well, for for wine begin beginners,、mm -hmm. which region in Burgundy will you recommend for them to look for first? Oh,、yeah, that's a good question. So, which region would I recommend、uh, someone to start with in Burgundy? And I would for sure say that it should be in Bon, just a Bon village red or a Bon village、uh, white. Both are very affordable because Bon, as a、um, as an appellation, is very big. Which means there are lots of negociants as well as small domains and producers that are making very quality, very good quality wine. And because there isn't any grand cru, you don't get very high inflated prices. I think it's a very good place to start because of its elegance and affordability. 呃，那呃呃，问到这个入门者，呃。第一个问题呢，他是问到，如果对于入门者来说呢，君你会比较推荐去品尝勃艮第的哪一个产区的酒款？呃，那么君你认为呢？嗯、呃，他一定会选择伯恩丘这个产区，呃，因为在这个地方呢，它呃面积非常的大，而且红白葡萄酒的品质都。比较的不错，呃，既有呃非常大型的酒商，也有小型的生产者，而且这里没有特级园，就不会说呃不会说这个价格过度的膨胀，呃，所以价格也是比较亲民的。嗯，对。嗯，对。One more question. One more question. One more question. <laughs> okay. Um. Well, maybe. Um. Maybe this one. Uh -huh. Um. Uh, if you are asked to sum up the characteristics of Burgundy's wine in several words,、mm. uh, what words will you choose?、Mm. Maybe you can repeat the question in Chinese while I. Um, okay. Uh, 那么第二个问题呢，就是问到如果让君你用几个关键词来总结一下勃艮第这个产区，他会选择怎样的一些关键词呢 ？Okay, the first word I would use is elegant. Because of the style of both Pinot Noir and Chardonnay expressed in Burgundy, which is always restrained and not big or heavy, it's a light to medium style,、uh, and there's a lot of subtle, delicate elements. So, the style is definitely elegant. And two, it's very sophisticated because the more you learn and the more you know about Burgundy. The more fascinated you are, and the more you feel that there is something there that. Is just beyond your grasp, and you keep going and digging and looking for answers. And there is a mystery to to the wine. And it, just by this whole journey of exploration, it is becomes a very sophisticated drink. 
And the third, I would say, is, is really in its complexity. It's a very complex region, both because it's with so many names and uh, so many producers and so much to learn, but at the same time, it's also complex in terms of its style. The style of wine from two varieties expressed in so many different ways um, shows you that really these grape varieties are not simple. They are very complex uh, wines that, that uh, many people can enjoy for different reasons. 呃，那呃，君尼所提到的三个关键词呢？第一个就是优雅，因为在勃艮第这个地方，无论是呃黑皮诺的红葡萄酒，还是霞多丽的白葡萄酒，呃，他们的风格都不是说特别的宏大，或者说过于沉重，呃呃，而是非常的精致。而第二个关键词呢，就是呃非常细腻。呃呃，主要是呢，勃艮第这个地方的葡萄酒，呃呃，你对它的了解越是深刻呢，你就越能够感受到它独特的魅力。而第三个关键词呢，是它的复杂复杂度。嗯、呃，在勃艮第这个地方，无论是呃，无论是它的葡萄酒的风格，还是说呃，它的这些呃。这些复杂的产区和分级制度，呃，都能够体现在这个关键词之中。Okay, so let's try、um, two whites just to give an idea of what what these regions、uh, and and producers produce in terms of、um, their expression when they go to Chablis, for example. So the first wine that I have is a 2013 Domaine Daniel Dumpt Chablis Lelys,、um, and As a fairly young Chablis, four years old, you can see that、um, the color is still bright lemon. The nose is very minerally and citrusy, and this is exactly as it should. 呃，那么接下来呢，君女将会品鉴三款白葡萄酒。首先呢，我们是从一款夏布利的白葡萄酒开始。这一款酒它是来自于嗯丹普父子酒庄呃利斯园夏布利。呃，夏布利的这款白葡萄酒，嗯、呃，它现在呢已经呃经过了四年的平成时间，还算是非常的年轻，呃，我们可以感受到呃它的矿物质风味，呃，这也正是它应有的一种表现。What I love about this wine is that it really shows the place. It, it to me, as soon as you taste it, you know that this is a Chablis because of its minerality, the tension, the acidity, the freshness, and There's no real fruity flavor here. It's really about a little bit of citrus, but mostly about its its stoniness, its minerals, and there's a sharpness that goes right across the palate. And great Chablis Premier Cru's that are about four or five years old are exactly like this. It's beautiful to drink now with just about any kind of seafood. 嗯，那么这一款酒呢 ，Jenny 最喜欢它的一点呢，就是它是一款非常具有代表性的白葡萄酒。嗯、呃，它呃，在这款酒之中呢，一品尝呢就能感受到这的的确确是一款来自夏布利的葡萄酒。呃，我们能够感受到它的这种矿物质风味。呃，虽然它的这个果味不是特别的浓郁，呃，也虽然有一些这个柑橘类水果的风味，但呃，最最最明显的还是它的一种类似于呃石头的这样的一种矿物质的感觉。And so, like most of Burgundy, Daniel Dumpt is a family story. They don't have a huge amount of land, but what they do, they they farm with their heart and with their own sons.、Uh, and it, and for 150 years, the Dumpt family has been wine growers.、Uh, and you'll see this very common, a repetition that in Burgundy, it's not just one or two generations, but very much five to ten generations of family wine growers who have winemaking in. Their blood. Um. 那么这这款酒呢，它是来自这个丹普父子酒庄，呃，而这个丹普家族呢，他们的酿酒历史已经有大约一百五十年左右了。呃，虽然他们拥有的土地并不多，但是呢，嗯、呃，他们是投入了真心来种植这一片葡萄园的。呃，这也是呃在勃艮第非常典型的一个现象，就是说，呃，这些的酿酒的家族都已经有大约五到十代人的历史了。So. This is Daniel Dumpt, and the second wine that I have is very different. Well, first of all, it's a Bouligny Montrachet, and as I mentioned, it's one of the most famous villages for white wine. 
And Henri Boyau is a brilliant winemaker. He comes also from a long line of growers, but it was really 20 years ago when he decided to start his own maison, negociant business. And then about 10 years ago, he started the domain. And this is a domain wine, which means they grow and they farm their own grapes, uh, not buying from other sources. And this Fulini is a very intense expression of a village white. 呃，那么这第二款酒的风格呢，与第一款酒又十分的不同。它是呃，来自于呃布瓦洛酒庄的一一款普里尼蒙普里尼蒙哈谢村庄级的一款白葡萄酒。呃，这款酒呢，它的酿酒师是叫做亨利布瓦洛，是一个非常富有天赋的酿酒师。呃，他大约是在二十年前开展了自己的酒商业务，而十年前呢，又开展了自己的酒庄业务。这一款酒呢，就是来自于。这个布瓦洛酒庄，也就是说，它采用的葡萄，呃，完全是由自己家族所种植，而不购买其他来源的葡萄。嗯嗯 ，sorry， 嗯，这款酒的呢，它风格就是呃，香气十分的浓郁。So there's a depth in this village wine that really it goes above and beyond what you expect. Because for most village wines from um, from Burgundy, as you saw in the pyramid, they're only from second to the bottom, which means they're kind of a, a commune, uh, an ordinary village, not anything special. And yet, when you have it in the hands of a very good grower, you can see that um, it's a it's a wine that is able to even age. At four years old, I feel like this will keep. At least for another three to five years, without a problem, and there's a richness and a fullness and a, a very good length here that um, makes me think that you know, for a village wine, it's it's it has to be one of the best. 呃，那么这一款酒呢，它虽然是一个村庄级的葡萄酒，但是它却具有很好的深度。呃，所以我们可以发现，就是呃，在一些比较优秀的这个生产者的葡萄酒之中呢，即使是呃来自于村庄级这种，我们可以看到金金字塔比较呃之中比较低端的一些葡萄酒来说，它也。依旧是非常的优质，呃，这款葡萄酒我们可以感受到它它的饱满的感觉，而且以及它的呃悠长的余味。呃，君你认为这一款酒呢，现在已经是平成四年了，但是还可以继续陈年大约三到五年的时间。So this is the Henri Boyau. We have one final white that we don't really have time to taste today, but I did want to show it because it is from a well-known producer, Olivier Lefleur, and he's done a, an amazing job. Really, first starting out as a, a negociant business and making a lot of what he farms over a hundred hectares of of wines and does it and delivers it at a very high quality level. Then,、uh, because he has his own vineyards as well, Olivier Lefleur started the domain side as、um, as a higher end、um, uh, offering under his portfolio. And this is the domain, and it's a, a wonderful Merceau Genevrier from 2013. 呃，那么这一款酒呢，虽然我们今天没有时间品尝了，但是还是呃呃 ，Jenny 非常希望跟大家介绍这介绍这款非常有代表性的葡萄酒，它是来自这个勒夫莱夫酒庄呃热纳福耶呃热纳福耶莫尔索一级园的这一款白葡萄酒，呃这个呃热呃勒夫莱夫酒庄的它的庄主呢，目前是奥利维尔勒夫勒夫莱夫，他呃他们家族呢种。种植的葡萄园面积大约为一百，呃，呃，超过一百公顷。而在呃，虽然种植了这么大面积的葡萄园，但是他们所生产的葡萄酒的品质，呃，依然是十分的优质。Great. So now I'm going to go straight on to、um, three red wines because I think that. There's a lot of people who memorize、um, names of Burgundy villages. They memorize the names of top famous producers, and yet the final link in really understanding and appreciating Burgundy is really to taste it, to describe it, to memorize that flavor.、Um, why Volnay tastes like this, and why Jevry Chambertin or Von Romanée tastes like this, and this is something that、uh, you can only do by opening the bottle. 
。嗯，那么接下来呢，君毅将会品鉴三款勃艮第的红葡萄酒。呃，在呃大家学习勃艮第的葡萄酒的同时呢，呃，虽然说，嗯、呃。记忆这些复杂的地名也非常的重要，但是实际上了解勃艮第葡萄酒的最好的方法，当然还是开一瓶酒来真真切切的品尝这瓶酒的风味啊、呃，并且描述出它的这些特点，呃，这样呃让让呃让大家来了解一下呃每一个村庄的葡萄酒为什么会展现出这样的特点。So the first wine that I have,、um, and I could have started out with a bone red, but Volnay really serves the same purpose because when you when you're trying to understand red Burgundy, you start out with the lightest, most elegant style, and it's either bone, it could be Sauvignon Blanc、bon、as well,、um, but Volnay has the perfume. The silky tannins, the elegance, you know, the the pale color, and everything that、um, I think, you know, Burgundy lovers really appreciate. This is the subtlety. This is the femininity. This is the floral、um, character about the wine that really makes people fall. 呃，那么，呃，今天呢，虽然我们没有这个来自伯恩这个产区的葡萄酒，但是，呃，这一款沃尔奈的葡萄酒呢，也是一个呃作为品鉴的好的开端，因为这里的葡萄酒它比较的轻盈，而且呃具有呃非常浓郁的香气，呃，而且我们也可以观察到它的颜色是比较的浅的，呃，同时它又拥有非常顺滑的单宁，呃，展现出了这样女性化特色的。So first, you notice that、um, most Burgundy is going to be this pale in color. So you can see through it when you look down and look at、uh, any writing、uh, on your desk. You can see that you can actually read it. So when you do the same thing with Cabernet or Syrah, it's much denser, and you won't be able to see through it. So the color and then the perfume. Is really what captures you. It has floral notes. You have dried roses. You have jasmine. You've got lovely aromatics that seduces you from the beginning. 呃，那么在这一款，呃，勃艮，呃，在在这一款这个沃尔奈的红葡萄酒之中呢，嗯、呃，我们可以看到它的颜色，这种比较浅的颜色，正是这种典型的勃艮第葡萄酒所应该具有的一种颜色，嗯、呃。呃，而且这款酒之中呢，散发出了非常浓郁的这个呃玫瑰，还有茉莉花等花香，这也正是它呃具有魅力的一个呃魅力点。So Louis Liger de Bois is、uh, from a winemaking family going back 400 years. So right now, Raphael de Bois is the winemaker and owner, and he creates created this style in 2012 for this Volnay. Um, as, as typical as you can imagine or want a Volnay to be, with its lightness, its light body, its florality, its silky tannins, it has everything that you might want. And really beautiful, starting to drink now, even at just five years old. 嗯，那么这款酒呢，它是来自于这个杜布瓦酒杜布瓦酒庄的。呃，我们品鉴这款酒的同时呢，我们就能感受到杜布瓦酒庄他们想要表达的这种典型的沃尔奈村的一种风格。呃，就是十分的轻盈，具具有这种丝滑的单宁。嗯、呃，同同时呢，又散发出非常浓郁的花朵的香气。So. Now you know what Volnay should taste like, what it may, you know, how it may seduce you, and why it would be so great. I want to take、um, the next journey to really Jevrechambertam. So, Volnay is in Cotabon. Now we're going north to Cotonou, and here we're at the heart, one of the heart、uh, of of、uh, Cotonou, which is Jevrechambertam. So you can see even from the color. Um, that the Chevrolet Chamatan is a little bit deeper. Usually, the red wines from Cote de Nuit is going to have a, a, a firmer tannins, a bit deeper and richer,、um, both in terms of flavor and concentration. 嗯，在了解了这个沃尔奈葡萄酒它的典型特征之后呢，接下来君丽品鉴到的这一款酒呢，就是来自热弗雷香贝丹村的这一款，呃，来自于叶丘的葡萄酒。呃，我们从颜色就可以观察到，它的颜色是比这个沃尔奈的葡萄酒要更加深的。呃，而且呢，无论是这个集中度还是呃单宁的感觉，都会更加的更加的浓郁强劲。
So Jaffer Chambertin has many premier crews. And as I mentioned, it, it is one of the larger villages in Cote de Nuit. And Lavo Saint Jacques, which is the premier crew uh, vineyard name, is one of the top uh, premier crews. And so, even at um, nine years of age, because this is a 2008, you you realize that the the wine has evolved and it has matured and it has opened up to really show what many writers call the peacock feathers. That's the beauty when a wine opens up and you see the tail, you see all the different varying colors. 嗯，那么这一款酒呢？呃，它的葡萄园是叫做圣雅园。呃，这款酒它已经经过了九年的评审时间，我们可以感受它到它发展。发展出来的一些风味，呃，目前它已经是达到了一个巅峰的状态. I love the fact that the wine has um has these really firm acidity because 2008 was uh was what you call a fresh vintage. 09 was ripe, but 08 was fresh with very good acidity. It was very good year also for white wines. And here in this Jeve Chambertin, you see that in addition to the tannins and the evolved fruit of mushrooms, some leather, some spices, you're also getting really this, this nice firm tannins and, and acidity that just support and lift it in the finish. So it's perfectly at its peak right now. Um, and it probably will stay like this for a while. And it's, it's a beautiful, mature wine to drink now. 嗯，这一款酒呢，它是来自于二零零八年份的，我们可以感受到它十分清新、清爽的酸度。而二零零八这个年份呢，也是一个对于白葡萄酒来说，也是一个非常好的年份。呃，而在这款热弗雷香贝
呃，那么，嗯、呃，我们今天品鉴的这几款红葡萄酒呢，它在呃酿酒过程中都是已经经过了呃一年以上的这个桶中陈年的时间，而这些酒庄呢，通常会采用百分之二十到百分之五十的新橡木桶来陈年。呃，这刚才提到的这款安慕拉夏酒庄的红葡萄酒呢，它是采用了整串发酵的这种发酵方式，也就是说，在发酵之前不会进行去梗的处理。呃，这样的过程呢，能够带给葡萄酒更多的咸鲜的风味以及更加呃丰富的单宁。So let's take a few questions. I think we have about five minutes left. Okay. 呃，那么现在呢，我们会回答另外的一些观众发来的疑问。Okay. Take some questions from the viewers now. Okay. Good. Um, well, uh, here's the question. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh. 这个问题是说到呃，我们有一些观众朋友发现呢，一些呃村庄级的村庄级的葡萄酒，它的价格甚至比一级元的葡萄酒还要贵，这是为什么呢？ Mm, um, uh, the question is why are some regional wines are uh, more e expensive than the pre premier cru wines? Oh, yes. Well, we did talk about the regions and the classifications and the quality pyramid, but actually there's also a quality pyramid among producers. So producers like um, Domaine de la Romaine Conti or Armand Rousseau uh, or Domaine Leroy, or Domaine du Jacques Ponceau, these are names where um, people really believe in what they do in terms of quality. So it means that, that um, even if they make a generic Bourgogne, people are willing to pay 300, 400, 500 yuan. But most generic Bourgognes only go for about 100 yuan or less. So it, it, it is really supply and demand and the reputation of the producer where you can command a higher price. 呃，那么这个问题呢，它，呃，它是。关于这个勃艮第的这些生产者的他的品质之间的差异，呃，比如说像在呃罗曼尼康帝酒庄还有乐华酒庄这些非常的顶级的酒庄之中，他们即使是在生产呃大区级的葡萄酒的时候，也会采用非常优质的葡萄。嗯、呃，那么消费者呢，在购买这些酒庄所生产的大区级的葡萄酒之呃的时候呢，可能会愿意花费大约三百到。五百元的呃来的价格来购买这些葡萄酒，但是通常来讲呢，呃，大多数的大区级的葡萄酒的价格呃大约只有一百元左右。So let's take one more question. I think we have maybe one or two. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, about this question. Uh, 那么下一个问题呢嗯，呃、哦、，Is it correct to say that Chardonnay is a grape variety without character and is merely the terrace? Mm. Chardonnay is a fascinating variety because it can be made in cool regions as well as warm regions with very different expressions and styles. But I think that to say that it's only a terroir expressed wine would really be uh, a mistake because there's so much a winemaker can do to Chardonnay. You can barrel ferment it, you can age it in all different types of materials, big oak, small oak, stainless steel. Uh, in Chab in Places like Chablis, they choose not to use too much oak at all. Uh, other places like Australia, uh, New Zealand, and, and uh, Sonoma, for example, they'll use quite a lot of oak and maybe even a lot of new oak, even for barrel ferment as well as maturation. So it doesn't just express the terroir. It can make great wine by the hand of the winemaker and the decisions that they make. 嗯，霞多丽这个葡萄品种呢，它呃，它的呃，它能够在呃，既可以在凉爽的产区，也可以在温暖的产区来酿造葡萄酒。呃呃，实际上呢，如果我们说呃，完全是由风土来决定霞多丽这个葡萄酒的特性呢，是不正确的。因为呢，酿呃，酿酒师们可以呃，对于霞多、呃、在酿造过程中还有许许多多其他的酿酒工艺可以使用，比如说呃，采用桶中发酵的。
的这种发酵方式，或者在呃陈年之中使用呃不同大小的橡木桶。呃，比如说呢，在夏布利这个产区，我们刚才提到它是呃几乎是不使用橡木桶的。呃，而在澳大利亚或者索呃美国的索诺马县这些地方呢，却会使用非常重的橡木桶，但是他们都能够制造出非常优质的霞多丽葡萄酒。So I know we don't have that much time, and I I can talk about Burgundy for many hours. But I want to give you just a little bit of advice for people who are going out there, trying their first Burgundy or wanting to explore. Everyone talks about how complicated all the place names are. We've tasted a few, but I would say that really start with a producer that is highly recommended to you by your favorite merchant, your favorite online wine store, or a very good friend. Because this is where you will find、um, some connection. Because it's the stories and the people behind the wine, especially in Burgundy, that really、uh, will speak to you and will show you and take you by the hand where to go with Burgundy. 嗯，那么这一次的呃直播呢，也就接近尾声了。呃，大师呢最后想要给大家一些呃关于勃艮第的小的建议，也就是说呢，当我们开始接触勃艮第的葡萄酒的时候呢，最好是从一些呃比较呃有名望的这些生产者来开始。呃，那么呃，在节目的最后呢，呃，还想告诉大家的一件事就是，呃，我们的呃红酒世界的网上商城在从今天开始一直到三月五号，呃，将会推出一个呃勃艮第葡萄酒的限时特惠活动，呃，当然也会包括我们今天所品鉴的这六款葡萄酒。嗯嗯，呃，希望大家在这一次直播之后呢，已经对勃艮第的葡萄酒有了一个初步的认识。嗯，谢谢大家的观看，谢谢，谢谢，谢谢 ，Thank you。